I think that you've heard quite a bit this week about the integrity subsystem. In particular, you've been hearing about secure and trusted boot and attestation. And there were talks on not necessarily the Linux integrity system, but about bootloaders in general. Um, we had talks from AMD about this. We had talks on tools. We had discussions about roots of trust, as well as load time versus runtime verification, missing measurements, and so on. There was a lot about secure and trust to boot. And you're going to see that this is not going to be any different. There's more work going on in the Linux integrity subsystem on secure and trusted boot. So, <clears throat> so one of the things that you saw by Eric's talk and by um, Hiana, um, his talk, is that different people, different scenarios have different policies. And from the very beginning, we defined IMA as being a system level policy that can be defined any way that anyone wants. You want to do appraisal, you do appraisal. You want what you want to praise, how you want to praise. That's going to be, that's up to you. What you want to measure, how much you want to measure. The more you measure, if you're using a TPM, well, the slower it's going to be because it has to be sequentially extending the TPM. So it's up to you, and the decision is all yours. Um, as to what type of risks you're willing to take. Obviously, the, the less you measure, the more risk. <clears throat> the less that you verify, the more risks. Um, um, and the more that you do, there's more um, performance um, impact. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, that on our way to upstreaming um, EVM, was that we um, needed to be able to verify. This was before signatures and signature verification. We were using an HMAC. And we needed some way to have a master key um, for the, to verify the, um, the EVM signature, to have a signature to create it and update it. And so we upstream trusted and encrypted keys. And as you saw from Matthew, they're using encrypted keys. Um, and as you saw, heard from Matt, um, there you, um, he's extended it to user space. So it's not only being used at this point um, by EV, for EVM. And <clears throat> there are new um, trusted key sources that we're going that are being proposed that are not TPM based. And those are being discussed as we go. There's some T-based mechanisms for having a trusted key. OK, so the remainder of the talk is going to be what happened this year, um, what we've upstreamed, what's in the process of being upstreamed, and what's expected to come. So as you're going to see, all of these things that have been upstreamed have been upstreamed uh, are basically for secure and trusted boot. The one exception is at the very bottom, and that's for Strebog um, Ghost Crypto. Uh, so if we start at the, um, the work that's being done, I'm going to call out Eric um, Richter and um, 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 at my colleague who's been helping on this. and. <clears throat> um, on doing the work that's involved in this for the secure and trusted boot for power, for open power to be specific. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that we're doing is that instead of modifying the Pixie bootloader, you know, in Grub um, and in other bootloaders, you can do a remote boot. Um, and instead of being... Um, Instead of modifying the Pixie standard or other standards um, to support another piece of information, such as the signature, we decided to uh, use appended signatures. And 
this code is now queued for the next, um, is now, it's queued for the next um, open window. So you have um, appended signature support in addition to the um, extended attributes. And um, the firmware, the pre-boot keys that are needed, these are the keys that are now being loaded. This year we created a new key ring just for the purpose so that we can differentiate between the pre-boot and, um, and the kernel based keys. Um, and the pre-boot keys, the firmware keys, are lo being loaded into the platform key ring and, <clears throat> and are used for only for verifying the k-exec kernel image. Um, initially, it was for the security IMA extended attribute, but subsequently, um, <clears throat> it's for the PCOF signature and for the appended signature that we just spoke about. Um, the other, um, when we initially started with IMA, we didn't want to, we wanted it to be enabled by the distros um, without having a policy, without requiring a policy. And so when you boot IMA, you don't require a policy, but if you supply a policy, then it will enforce whatever that policy is. The problem is, was then for, um, for lockdown, that you really needed to be able to say, yes, we're gonna enforce um, kernel modules, we're gonna enforce that the k-exec kernel image is gonna be signed, and so we really needed a build time option for that as well. Uh, and <clears throat> so we had the persi persistent compile build time option of specifying, of requiring that the k-exec kernel, um, k-exec module is, image is signed. And at runtime um, on OpenPower, what we're working on is um, based on the secure boot modes of enabling a runtime policy. And Nana just posted this week um, that policy, um, those, those patches. And we have from Microsoft, from this group, from Prakar, wherever you are, over there. Um, we're measuring the boot command line, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so, but in addition to measuring and having other methods of appraising files, we want those methods, the signatures that were used for verifying it, to be included in the measurement list. And so you can't, so currently the only, you had one method of specifying what your template was gonna be. And with Matthew's help, um, we now have a runtime option for specifying the template. And as you see here, we can now, for the command line, specify the template as being I'm a buff, which would, which would include the boot command line. And for the um, k-exec image, it would, um, there's a new format called I'm a mod sig that would include both the exadder extended attribute, if it existed, and also the appended signature. And similarly, you could do this for kernel modules. So at this point, um, there, um, based on different use cases, different things come up. So in the um, distro case, we had been told that, that the LSM policies, um, that policy rules wouldn't be deleted. Um, that's not exactly true. And so uh, Yana um, helped us so that the policies, as the policies are being updated, uh, the LSM policies are updated, IMA, um, will, the IMA policy will be updated as well to reflect the new numbers associated with the LSM. Uh, um, thank you. Uh, 
And Stefan Berger, um, we, had, we, over, we were using the audit integrity rule for multiple things that has been split out now so that the integrity rule is one thing and the policy rules that you're loading will be a different audit message. And there were some problems with, um, with overlay FS. Not all of it has been um, fixed, but at least for IMA, um, the extended attribute, um, it's now able to write out the extended attribute, read and write the extended attribute. So we have a couple of new things. We closed a couple of new problems. Um, the first one was um, if you don't have an IMA policy, but you want it to be able to prevent loading unsigned the KXEC kernel image or kernel modules or firmware, whatever that were unsigned, there was no way of doing it outside of IMA. And this is before the lockdown patches have, were upstreamed. So, so with this new hook, it, it's possible. Um, the lockdown patches are not using this. They could have, but they didn't. Um, um, and we closed out a couple of the firmware, firmware issues um, that were still um, a problem. And we warned about others. Um, if you don't have an IOMMU, um, then there's nothing much that you can do about firmware using um, DMA buffers. So at least now we're warning that the DMA buffer, um, it's possible that a previously um, used buffer that the, that, the fir that the firmware could be used before the signature verification completed. Um, and while they were working on um, <clears throat> overlay FS, they, were t um, they mentioned that there is now a concept of a persistent temporary file that, um, and those files, if it's persistent, well, it needs to be measured and appraised and everything else. And so we, um, you now have a new hook for doing that. And so for when you load, um, when you run an, um, an executable, the kernel takes care of for you some locking issues. Uh, locking so that nobody can modify it while you're executing it. Unfortunately, that's not the case for MMAP. This is nothing new. Other people have known this. And there have been a couple of different methods for um, proposed LSMs um, um, as to how to lock this. For the time being, what, um, what was upstreamed was that at least if a file is open for um, write, we're not allowing, and you're verifying the signature on it, we're not allowing you to execute it. So, <clears throat> and um, so we, well, the, we added some KXX self-tests um, that it originally started out in the IMA, um, um, as an IMA self-test, but was later moved into the KXEC. Um, and those verify whether or not um, your system will tell you whether or not you're verifying the KXEC image or not, um, based on policies. Um, we have um, the IMA EVM utils package now has support regression, some regression testing of the package not of the Linux integrity subsystem yet, but I appreciate Vitaly's help in getting that, um, getting that there. It is yet to be upstreamed, but he posted that recently. And, and we have a couple of new um, LTP tests that were written by Peter. So the next things that are gonna be worked on, which are being worked on is, um, We've tried multiple different ways of including um, XADRs in CPIO. And um, they didn't go too far because there were a couple, there's a couple of reasons for them not having been upstreamed. Um, 
One is that every time that you try to extend CPAO, while well, it's a standard and there's, the standard is not being updated, it's a deprecated standard. Um, and, and there needs to be support, a lot of work done to change different fields. So the CPIO um, support is, we have a version of it that is only adding X adders and not extending, um, fixing other fields that need to be fixed, like the timestamp and other things. And that is being done by Roberto, and it just needs some people to review it. So to review the code, to test it, and to help us. I've um, reviewed it and tested it, and it's on my queue to get it upstream, but I would l appreciate any help that we can get in reviewing it. Um, <clears throat> and the other major thing that I'm going to speak about, the rest are self-explanatory here, is, um, is the updating of mutable file hashes. One of the problems that we have with mutable files is that if you pull the plug at any point before the file closes, if the file has changed, well, that file will, will not be in a good state and cannot be recovered. So uh, Yana is working on, um, on updating it and on, on updating it more frequently so that we can um, have, be able to reboot after a power loss or some other type of failure. Um, I think that the rest is pretty self-explanatory. And thank you so much to everyone who's helped, who is helping and making the changes. And we did release a new version of IMA EVM Nutils. The new, um, this is from I'm not sure that this is readable, but this is the change log of, it was a major release because I hadn't released one in over a year, closer to a year and a half. But we now have um, um, support from Matthew for um, EVM signatures, other di larger digests rather than just the SHA one. And we have support, Streebug support, OpenSSL engine support, and, um, and being able to read um, the PCRs, TPM2 P um, TPM PCRs. And with that, any questions? On the uh, new LSM security hook, uh, security kernel load data, is there any LSM planning on implementing it, or have they already implemented it for its use in the module? Um, it's, being, it's being used by um, IMA at the moment um, for preventing um, loading um, the K, um, loading um, kernel modules, the old syscalls, basically. So it is being used. It's just not being used by lockdown. Not yet. But some new some new LSMs may use it as well. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Mimi.